We're back coming up on 814 now with your health. And this morning, some important life-saving skills that you can use during some of the most common emergency situations. Because when an emergency strikes, we know every second counts. So senior medical correspondent Dr. John Torres is here to go over the simple ways we can all step in and save a life. Good morning Good to morning, you. Good morning, Dr. John. So let's do this first one here. This is actually a nightmare for me, era for a lot of us, right? You're at a restaurant, you're out to eat, um, maybe you're at home and someone starts choking. And at first you kind of watch to see if they yeah. can make it happen. And then you realize, no, this is a problem. Yeah. Exactly, that's it. And the first thing you want to do is realize that they're choking and be able to do something about it. So they say the international sign for choking is people holding their hand up here. In a panic situation, they might not do that. Yeah. It might be one, they might be pointing, might be clearing the table of things and just kind of writhing around. First thing you want to do is you want to go up to them and you want to say, are you choking? Mm -hmm. And they should be with it enough to go, yes, yes. And then let them know you're going to do something. Okay. Say, I know how to remove this. I'm going to help you just to make sure that they're okay with you helping them. They don't okay. think you're trying to assault Hurt them or them. something. Right. And then what you want to do is you want to stand behind them. This is choking Charlie. He's going to help us here. Choking Charlie. Yeah, choking Look Charlie. choking Charlie. He's definitely choking. So Charlie. you want to stand behind them. You want to go ahead and bend them over a little bit. Right where their belly button is, you want to put your fist just a little above their belly button. One fist. Yes. Wrap your hand around that. Make sure they're in tight to you, and then you want to push in and up. Can That's I tell important. you why I said this was uh, scary for me and a lot of people? I'm afraid we're afraid we're going to hurt someone. You, you know what? You're not going to hurt them. Number one, you're in a soft area here where their belly and intestines are. You can't squish hard enough. Okay. And okay. number two, what's going to hurt them is that food not That's coming true. out. Right. And what you want to do is you want to keep grasping and doing that until it pops out. Okay. If it doesn't pop out for some reason and they pass out, then lay them on the floor and start CPR. Scary. Someone should be calling 911 that whole time. Okay. All right. Dr. All right. John, is there a situation where you could even take your finger and stick it down their throat if you can? You do not want to do that because nope. the problem is if you see food, you can pull it out once they've passed out. Only if you see it. Okay. You don't want to stick your finger in there because you could push it further in. Got it. That Got is it. bad. So okay. just again, just keep pushing. All right. Let's let's talk about this guy. Looks like he's, he's, he's seen better days. Well. Oh, and, and unfortunately, the reality of the situation is we're having mass shootings. We're having a lot of gunshots. Right. You could be at a concert. You could be at an office. You could be walking down the street. Somebody gets shot or they get hurt in some kind of industrial accident or car accident so and they're bleeding. bleeding right you need to stop the bleeding immediately and there are a few things here you can use for a makeshift tourniquet because you know in the military i use tourniquets that are made for this but you don't always have those with you nobody does but you might have a tie a t-shirt some socks i mean just think about any kind of things you can use and the pins so we're going to try this on and give me this tie real quick all right and i'll show you how to make a so makeshift what's the tourniquet. goal here the Remind goal here is people. to stop the bleeding so assuming he got a gunshot wound somewhere in the leg here you want to try and stop the bleeding within a few minutes because they're going to bleed to death very very quickly and what you want to do is wrap something around. People think belts. Belts do not work. Can you give me those two pens there, sure, please? Sure, sure. Belts don't work? Belts don't work. They're too hard to twist, and the twisting mechanism is what actually stops the bleeding. Twisting? So what you want to do, one oh. pin won't work. Two pins work great. And then you want to just oh twist gosh. and twist as and twist as, as tight as you can Jeez. until the bleeding stops. Now, oh if I let go, it's going to untwist. So give me the shoestrings. Shoestrings, right. Right. And just give me a shoestring here. And what you want to do is get the shoestring, tie it around, and then secure that in place. The whole time you're doing this, as you're getting these instruments ready, which you just saw, it took a few minutes to get them ready, have somebody else supply, apply direct pressure, because that direct pressure is going to stop this from bleeding. Direct pressure on the wound. On the wound, while the tourniquet's being put in place. Oh Call 911, obviously. And then if it, even if it doesn't stop bleeding, yeah. you can go ahead and continue to apply direct pressure. It's going to slow it down. That's the important mm. thing until help gets there. And if you don't have a towel, you could use a stretchy sock. A stretchy sock you can use. You can use a T-shirt, okay. anything. Sleeves of your long sleeve shirt. Any of those can really work to put the tourniquet on. I just learned a lot there. Don't Let's walk to another situation. You're in the park. You're with family, friends, loved ones, even a stranger you see. They fall to the ground. They're having a seizure. What do you do? So there's a misconception that when people have seizures, it's an old myth that you want to put something in their mouth to stop them from swallowing their tongue. Number one, those muscles that control their mouth are one of the biggest muscles in our body. You are not going to get the mouth open. It's going to see shut. Every muscle is tightened. Ah. It's going to see shut. You're just going to break teeth and cause problems. So don't put anything in their mouth. What you want to do is essentially ride out the seizure. It's only going to last a few minutes if they're somebody with seizure disorders or they have a seizure. So does that mean stand back or can you no. help in something? You want to help. Two things you want to do. Number one, first and most important, you want to protect the head. So give me that real quick. Sweatshirt. This is a sweatshirt, any kind of blanket or anything, and just put it down under their head and protect their head. The other thing they're going to do is they're going to be moving around a whole lot and thrashing around. So you don't want to hold their arms still because you're not going to be able to right. or you're going to cause injuries, but you don't want them to get hurt. So just clear out. 
anything from the area. So the gist is you don't want to hold them down, no. like allow them to seize out, but also don't let them hurt themselves further. Exactly. And that's the main point. Just r help them end the seizure. Just help them ride the seizure out. Okay, the main so thing, protect the head, protect the arms, protect the legs. So and then once they're done with the seizure, yeah, they so have when it's stopped, then when is it appropriate to engage? It's called a post-ictal state. They're going to have about 15 minutes of grogginess, not being very awake. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and then just roll them on their side and let them sit there because they might throw up and you don't want them to choke on it. So roll them on their side, keep assuring them that they're going to be okay, call an ambulance, and then go from there. It's a good reminder to the other Good Samaritans who are walking by to get engaged and well and call for help so others can help whoever is And that's with all of them. Help is important, getting the whole community in there. You're probably never going to be at one place by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're going to be at a place where people can help. Like I said, with tourniquets, direct pressure. Yeah. You want to make sure that's applied appropriate. Somebody can help you here. People tend to panic in situations like this. Yes. Of course. So if you're the one that can take a couple breaths and really slow good. things down, you're great. the one that's going to help yeah, out. That was good yeah, advice. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. And we want to thank World Point and Laredell Medical for lending us these mannequins for this important demonstration. How, just really quickly, how can you tell if you come upon someone that they're actually having a seizure mm -hmm. and it's not? Well, you can see a seizure is a full brain activity where their brain is just firing completely. And so everything is moving around. They're either stiff where they have what's called tonic-clonic, where they're just moving all their extremities. Okay. Their, their jaws are clenched. They're not talking to you. They're not listening to you. They're not doing anything. Got it. That's a seizure. Important. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Joe. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.